Okay. Okay, hello everyone, and um, today we're going to have a lesson on silent voice, and this is going to be the first in four episodes, <laughs> four episodes, four lessons where we're going to look at dialogue in silent voice. Um, we're going to take scenes from silent voice, and we're just going to look at the dialogue, we're going to look at the vocabulary, the grammar, and so on, and just break it down. So... We're going to get into the first one, and let's go. おい、すまねえ。様、覗き見せてるだろ。俺にも見せろ。うん。石田君、なんか手を一人でやってる。シュワじゃねえな。なんだって。すごいな。石田君にはそんな特技が。うん。お前シュワわかるのか。強い役し
showing something towards the ore. So ni means towards something and it's usually the towards is what precedes that particle. In this case it's ore, so this is saying towards me, show me, miseru, the verb miseru is the original verb. And mo is means also, also. So we're saying show towards me also. Um, misero, so if the original is miseru, to get to misero, we're just changing the ru and it becomes a ro. The reason why we do that is when you are doing commands or you're commanding something, um, and this is usually again quite informal. You'd say you use the rot form, so this ot form. So, for example, if you want to say eat, um, I guess you would say tabero. For example, uh, sorry, that's not drawn properly, <laughs> but yeah, you'd say rot to say eat. Tabero. Um, so if we carry on, we can probably play the dialogue. Sama, nozoki ni shiteru daro. Ore ni mo misero. Hmm? Ishiro kun, nanka te o hito hito yatteru. Okay, so obviously Ishida kun is a name. Ishida and then kun, which is just um, a suffix for boys' names. Um, nanka. So, nanka can translate as like somewhat in is somewhat doing something, um, and we're gonna take this as a whole phrase and say this means to wave hands around, and we get that because we've got here is hand te o hira hira to yatteru. So this hira hira. You can imagine the action of hira hira hira. I don't know. Just the way you pronounce it sounds like something flapping, maybe. Hira hira. So it's got that kind of sound. And then yatteru comes from yaru, which means to do. Um, as does suru, yaru, same meaning. And when we're using things like this, which we can call adverbs, before the adverb, we have the to. So, hira hira to yatteru. So, te o hira hira to yatteru, which means waving your hands about a lot. Um, okay. So. So, she just said, shuwa jane no shuwa. So, if we're looking at it at kanji perspective, it's very logical. As we said, this was hand. This is hand as well. Hand. And um, we have the kanji for language or speech. So we have hand speech, hand communication, which is sign language. So it's quite obvious. You might notice that this reading of hand is different to this reading of hand. And um, I suppose if you're watching this, maybe you already know that different kanji have different re readings in different situations. The reason why the readings for these two kanji are different, even though it's the same kanji, is because usually when we use the kunyomi reading, which is um, the reading for this one here, which is te, which is the one I've put in hiragana here. Um, I'll just put the onyomi here. But shoo. So when we use kunyomi readings for kanji, most of the time the kanji is by itself. So we resort to the kunyomi reading. When the kanji is coupled with another kanji, in this case it's coupled up with this kanji, then we are going to resort to the on yomi reading. So what we've got is instead of using te, 
it's going to be shu wa shu is going to be the reading instead and this is a generic rule although there are exceptions so look out for those but that's a generic rule and okay jane obviously that comes from janai that's janai and um that means um and it's interesting because janai means not but in this case the meaning here means isn't it um so it's saying isn't it but the way he's saying she's saying it sorry she says uh shua janai no which is kind of like she's knows she knows what it is but she's just kind of saying well obviously it's it's hand lang it's sign language isn't it um so this jane is like isn't it and not is just a particle used sometimes for questions so this is just question particle if we carry on <laughs> So uh, he's just said none that there before, but sugoi na sugoi means awesome. Ishida kun ni wa sonna tokui wa. So the tokui in this case is a special skill, and there's an implication that he's gonna say something that I didn't know he had such a skill. Sonna tokui wa, um, yeah, and then so on. But it's implied that he's going to say, I didn't know we had such a special skill. Um, again, sonna means like such, such a, um, such a skill. And, um, okay. We'll see if you can work out these particles here. Um, <laughs> he doesn't actually use the particles. He omits them, but here we can just say "omae wa shu wa ga wakaru no ka." So you understand sign language. Tsuyaku shiro. Translate again. This shiro. Translate tsuyaku shiro. Sort of thing. Now here. You got this noka at the que for the question. Instead of no, we have noka. So noka kind of makes it more masculine speech. No is kind of makes the question sound softer, and this sounds rougher. So, he, so this character with the green head, I forgot his name. He speaks very roughly. In his speech, which is why you have noka or kisama in his speech, and so yeah, so let's carry on. So if we carry on here, um, obviously if you didn't realize, which hopefully you did, um, at the bottom here you've got the kanji, you've got the hiragana, and you got the meaning. Now the hiragana here, if you're wondering, is it onyomi or kunyomi? It really depends on basically how it's used in the text is what I've put here. Although I did forget to put shu for hand here. Um, I could write that better. Shu. But um, here, it's the readings that are in the text, which are all kunyomi here. Why? Because all these examples are kanji used without being with another kanji. So we're going for Kinyomi reading. And so, okay, let's carry on from where we got to. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so Okay, so while well, that sorts itself out, saki means earlier. So we're actually starting saki at the beginning. And we've got unko atama, which means unko 
literally means poo atama head so poo head so i guess because um he has a poo shaped head um dare again if you're asking the question maybe it would be formally it would be like dare desu ka who is it but or literally who is because this is kind of kind of means is sort of um so but she's got rid of that and just a saki no kotama dare which is my who is this so you realize it's all backwards actually so it's the before poo head who so it's the other way around and if we carry on It's just um so this is implied maybe this but it's not there so actually the 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 main sentence is hito so that's the main part but we're working backwards so we got shiranai hito which means person don't know which is implied as i don't know shiranai hito and then zen zen is intensifying shiranai so zen zen means like not at all so not at all so person no not at all um not knowing person so it's like person i don't know you can see that the verb is describing the noun um so this is quite common construction when you're creating compound sentences in japanese you have the noun and it might be preceded by this whole sentence which is describing the noun here so all this is describing the hito and um e kemoi um kemoi comes from kimochi warui oh, warui which means um kind of bad feeling literally but it does mean gross and disgusting in slang speech e kimoi maji me ni the majime ni is actually an adverb so majime ni means seriously so it's implying again majime ni um majime ni suru or majime ni tsuyaku suru so it's saying do it seriously or translate it properly so majime ni is an adverb and it's implying that a verb would follow hanase again this is another way of um kind of expressing like a command you get rid of the ru and this doesn't happen in all cases but in this case with hanase ru um you can get rid of the ru to say hanase let go hanase again it's very informal sort of thing um hanase <laughs> Okay, so the last sentence here, ochiru nayo, we've got ochiru which means to fall and we've got the na. So na after a plain form of the verb or a dictionary form of the verb means don't. Again, it's very informal. So for example, if I go back to taberu, taberu, if I add na Whereas without the nat it would mean eat the nat makes it mean don't eat and it's quite a strong command and this yo is again it's just a particle used for speech um ochiru na yo just make things flow better than just ochiru na on that on its own that kind of sounds a bit strong but ochiru na yo makes it sound softer and then obviously sure and then um we go to the next slide and okay we can see how long it goes before it starts buffering um, 
ってはいけない。落ちるなよ、少年。本当は、あってはいけないと思った。Actually, I probably should say that try and work out the particles for the rest of the things as I go through and、um, see if you can get them right. Obviously, here we've just heard it's honto wa. Now, there is a honto ni and there's a honto wa. Probably important to distinguish the difference. Honto wa is making the, the honto into a sort of noun.、Um, Whereas honto ni is making it into an adverb. What you might notice is that actually the ni can be used for several verbs to make it, make it an adverb. So again, if we have kantan, which means easy, if we add ni, and this is for na adjectives, you add the ni. When you add ni, It becomes an adverb, so kanta ni、uh, tsuyaku shite ta. So I translated quite easily, or something like that, or interpreted quite easily. And、um, so here it's saying honto wa. So honto ni would make the meaning I really tried, really thought I shouldn't meet her. But this is saying the truth is, which is making it a noun, honto wa. あってはいけない。Um, so this てはいけない is saying, suggesting something you shouldn't do.、Um, there is two. There's てはいけない and there's てはならない。And てはならない is more used when it's like a formal command. てはいけない is something that you kind of feel that you shouldn't do. General meaning.、Um, so this is てはいけない。So, what we're doing is we're getting the te form of a verb,、um, which、um, hopefully now I can show you this nice graph to show you how to get the te form. Avoid me explaining it. And so, after the te form, you just,、um, you just add wa ikenai. And then here we've got to m u t a So, I thought this, and that's the truth. So, to omota, which comes from to omo, omo, which means to think.、Um, so, let's carry on. See if you can work out the particles. Okay, so I、uh, could have followed it along, <laughs> but、um, I didn't. Let me see if I can follow it along with the text. I'll point the mouse to the text and follow it. 友達の意味をこの2週間ずっと考えていた僕が So you can see that、um, Yuzuru, that's her name, translates it as、um, 考えていた which comes from 考えている and in this case we've got the iru with the past tense of the past present progressive or the past progressive <laughs> I can't say it right When you're saying something that's happened in the past for a period of time, then you, when in speech you don't have to use the e, you could say kangaete ta, but you can say kangaete ta as well.、Um, so, what we've got here is as you can check here, you can check what the meaning is, the pronunciation for the right,、um, for the right kanji. I'll put all the kanji stuff here. So, tomodachi. So, this is friend, imi, meaning. So, the friend meaning, o and then this is a part of the sentence, and this is part of the sentence. So, we'll break the sentence down. So, this is what we're looking for. So, we can get rid of this. We could get rid of this sentence, and it would still make sense. So, tomodachi no imi o zutto kangaite ta. So, I've been thinking about, I, will, I was thinking about, The meaning of the friend constantly, meaning of friend constantly. Zutto means continuously, constantly. So again, you could get rid of zutto、um, and just say, Tomodachi no imi o kangaite ta. So I thought about what friend meaning 
or what it means to have a friend. Um, however, if you want to create um, a sense of time, obviously this kono ni shukan means two weeks, or specifically these two weeks, and because it's past tense, we're, spe we're specifying the past two weeks. That implies the past two weeks. Kono ni shukan. And then, yeah. So we could put kono ni shukan at the beginning of the sentence and it would still make sense. This o particle is actually describing the verb. So o will always follow a verb. So we know the o is is describing this part here and not this part which is a noun. So that's why tomodachi no imi o kangaete da would still be a sentence that makes sense. So I hope that made sense. But what I would quickly say is that there's a difference between kangaeteiru or kangaeru, which is the original verb, which I can't get to because the thing's blocking, but this one and omo. So omo means to think something, whereas kangaeru means to think about something. So if there was a thought that was on your mind, then it's just a thought on your mind or more um, or you'd like to think this opinion then you say or more but if you've been considering something then it'd be more kangaeru okay so did you work out the particles for this next sentence if not we're going to go to it Okay, so it's it's done that. Okay, so yeah, it was <laughs> so it's boku ga so me I kimi ni ao So again this ni particle in this sense just remember, we've gone over two definitions. Ni as an adverb, as in majime ni, honto ni, and ni as going towards something. So in this case, it's kimi ni, which means going towards you. In this case, meeting towards you, ao, which is to meet, which we're saying we're meeting towards you, we're meeting you. The boku is meeting the kimi. And um, again, like we said with zenzen shiranai hito, we have all this, and this is just describing the ryu, which is the reason. reason. But we could just have ryu n sagashite ita, um, the particle here being o. And it would still make sense as a sentence, but this is just giving us some extra information, like clauses in English. So, do you also gosh data? So, literally, I was searching. Again, you got this data, which could be sagash data, but it's sagash data here. Boku ga. Um, so. This boku ga here, the ga is specifying that I I was really trying to find a reason to meet you. So it's it's more implying that um, boku boku wa would more imply that it's just a fact. I was just searching for a reason to meet you. But boku ga is really emphasizing I was really trying my hardest to find a reason. So it's it's more emphasizing him. Um, and that's what he was trying to do rather than the fact that he was just searching for a reason. Hope that makes sense. Ga and wa, there's a lot of things about it, but you know, that's how it is. Again, um, Ishida. I don't need to translate that. <laughs> then the next part we have Ishida kun. Ureshi. Watoshimo. Okay, 
So, um, you can see Kangai Teta, Kangai Teta. So, Udeshi Watashi Mo Onaji Koto Kangai Teta. Sorry, my voice is a bit off. <laughs> Udeshi. Udeshi can be said by itself, and it literally just means happy. So, this I is implied again. Watashi mo onaji koto o kangaete ta. So I was also trying thinking the same thing. And then. Okashine. Okashine. Kangaete ta. Okashine. There's a user who says okashine, which means that's funny or that's strange. Um, the funny is kind of an ironic funny in a sense, but um, okashi can be used for kind of funny in a a funny sense. So kind of moshidoi. So ne again, right? So like that sort of thing. That's funny, right? But in this sense, because she's speaking to herself, it's like. It's it kind of helps. I can't describe it, but it's it's a feeling like you feel that you use okashine here, um, as really that's strange. Why do you want to meet him? Hmm. Hmm. Okashine, a sort of thing. I can't convey it, but that's try and feel it. That's what I'd say. But yeah, so that's the breakdown of the.、Um, The whole scene. And let's take one final look at it all the way through. And、um, we'll do that first with the、um, subtitles and then without the subtitles.、Um, which means the subtitles are all, it's all a mess. <laughs> so, <laughs>、um, I don't know if I can, yeah, I can just erase all the ink on the slide. Oh, my precious work! Gone. I can probably. No, I can't go back. I can't trace my steps. So if I just erase everything.、Um, yep.、Yeah. And we can just go from the beginning and we'll just work through it. This time with a blue pen just so you can follow where we're going.、Uh, okay. Is it gonna work? <laughs> I don't know. Oh boy.、Um, hold on. Oh, 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 さっきのうんこ頭だれ。で、uh, <laughs> go to the next slide。I hope you followed or was able to follow、um, as best as you could。and then we'll go and carry on from where we left off。さっきのうんこ頭だれ。全然知らない人。えー、キモーイ。マジメニー。ハムセ。落ちるなよ、少年。本当はあってはいけない。Okay, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> This is just a mess. <laughs> 本当にめちゃくちゃだ。Uh, let's let's、um, go from here and give it some time to sort out. What the fuck? Sony. Alright, I don't know if this is just. あってはいけないと思った
友達の意味をこの2週間ずっと考えていた僕が君に会うっていう探していた石田君嬉しい私も同じこと考えてたおかしいね Okay, there you go.、Um, my bad that it was just buffering so much. So that's with <laughs> the subtitles. And let's try and watch it without the subtitles and see how much you can follow. Oh, 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 This is going to be difficult because I'm trying to grab the thing without the other thing popping up. Ah, it's not. Shoo, I don't know. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh さっきのうんこ頭誰全然知らない人えー、キモーイマジメニーダメっせよ落ちるなよ少年本当はあってはいけないと思った友達の意味をこの2週間ずっと考えていた僕が君に会う理由探していた石田君嬉しい私も同じこと考えてたおかしいねうーんSo there it is.、Um, thank you for watching, and、um, I hope this helps. With this lesson and with the other lessons, it will also come with an Anki deck. So you can just practice some of the vocabulary from Silent Voice. I might just put it into one whole Anki deck, and then you can just check all the dialogue. So once all these lessons are done, you can practice with these、um, phrases and vocabulary. And、um, hopefully, try and learn something new. So, thank you very much. And yeah, m a t o n e